Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you several analysis tools here in QGIS. As you can see I've got a, a whole load of these points everywhere, it's some random sort of data and um, that I've used on several um, videos including previously one on heat map. Uh, so that's called random points. I've also got these London roads, see the black lines, um, and they are just a selection of roads within the sort of um, within the M25 sort of thing. Um, if you don't know the M25, it's um, one of the largest car parks in Europe. And, um, uh, and and you know when I click on one of these London roads, you see I've got the A124, for example. Let's click on another. That one's the A101. So the point is they've got a road road code a name. So the and that's from that data is actually from the Ordnance Survey. It's some open data. Um, and these red triangles, that, well, they, they could be anything really. They could be some kind of um, street furniture data, sort of benches, um, litter bins, uh, so, sort of um, just just anything really. And if I click on them, uh, so I've got a, a sort of street and a postcode and a unique uh, a unique object ID. What I'd like to do is say, well, what's the relationship between these black lines, which are all A roads, and these red triangles? I'd like to get this idea of what's the sort of nearest. Um, and I say sort of, because I'm going to use quite a largish value, um, nearest uh, A road to, to these points. And, uh, and like I said, these, these areas I've got adjusted, as you can see, they're in the, in the center of um, around London. So it's, it's a selection. Um, so, so effectively, it's, uh, it, it, it's gonna be a, uh, an attribute join using location. And it's, the, the, the idea, behind this is 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 a uh, to, to effectively copy some data from one layer from the uh, London roads which is the road number and copy that piece of data or that field into the random points table so I'm going to borrow bring that data across using some kind of location query a, 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 uh, some using the geometry so I've got a sort of tolerance. I'm happy sort of up to 50 meters, let's say. Um, so the first step in this really is to create a buffer. Um, on the geoprocessing tools at the top here, you'll see buffer. I want to buffer the roads, which are the London A roads there. So because I'm saying, you know, I want to um, specifically use that sort of data set and I want to say, find out what's within 50 meters of those of those line segments of those roads. It's 50, the distance. I can change the units there. The, uh, there's various other um, settings and assistant you can use, all sorts of stuff. And I'll actually be um, doing another video on that, on those sorts of settings um, in the future. Um, but th this is the basics, it's all you need. And I'm gonna copy it to, uh, I'm gonna make these buff buffers actually get written to a file. So I'm gonna call it my roads 50 meters. Um, so that's actually going to be outputted to an actual file on my D drive, um, which is an SSD, so it'll be very, very quick. And um, but I, you know, it could it could have been a temporary layer which is in memory, or I could save it direct to a geo package, um, one that perhaps already exists, um, uh, and save it direct to Postgres as well, for example, or append it to something that exists. Um, so let's run that. Oh, 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 yep, yeah, that's true. I didn't, I, I didn't put my file extension. It needs to know what it is. So that's why I got that little error message up, 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 up there. Um, .shp is just a shape file I'm creating. So as you can see, it's pretty instant. Um, and there you see, you can see the my roads. Let's turn off the points for a second. You can see these sort of 50 meter buffer. I left the sort of endings in that sort of circular mitre, um, circular shape, um, but 
not too fussed about that shape. It's the distance of 50 meters. Um, so what does that mean? Well, what we can do now is um, let's turn on the points again, is use the um, location, the join by location uh, feature. So I go to vector and under data management tools, you'll see join attributes by location. So what, what, I'm, what I'm wanting to uh, grab here is the um, is to use the actual buffer itself because I've got this 50 meter buffer going on because I'm happy it to be you know within 50 meters sort of thing and uh, and the points just have to intersect with that buffer uh, and that's all that I'm in, interested in uh, intersects yes they're points so they could be within and all this sort of stuff but it is it will come out with the same um, sort of answer so I've just left it on intersects if you look uh, just down here it says fields to add well I only want to add the road number that's the field that's the attribute I want to pick off not really fussed about anything else so you can see how so we're, we're in, in this you see it says fields to add leave empty to use all fields but now I've selected one it says one option selected I'm only interested in the first matching field I yeah there could be several you know um, um, you know there may be an overlap at the end of the buffer sort of thing on the, at the start or end point of the buffer but I'm, I'm not bothered just just use the first one um, that's good enough for this for this exercise that I want to do really I just want confirmation that it's within 50 meters of an A road and getting the actual A road code and stuff is that is a bonus really it's the icing on the cake so there's nothing really here I could put in a little prefix there maybe it says road road number or, or whatever the name of the layer but I won't uh, bother with that and I'll just create a temporary layer as well so let's run shouldn't take too long okay so what's happened it's created a another point layer which is exactly the same as random points you know the source oh. um, but if I just let's just zoom in uh, and click on zoom uh, on joint layer um, I could have given it a name or something and then click on let's say let's say this point here that's inside a um, make sure it's highlighted inside this we can see clearly it's in there and so now that 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 point data has road number attached to it, a501 if we click on this one here that should have no a road there you go road number is not so you see how now we started off with random points let's just open the attribute table with random points so that that was that you see I just got these three columns but now we've ended up with those same columns plus road number some of them will be null definitely because I've got much more um, points and some of them will, will sort of uh, be outliers and not not within um, any of the data uh, any of the any of the buffers there's a load so these will all be around sort of central London area so the road number has been attached it's been joined to this to this layer so um, what would be interesting is actually well what's the count of these you know just just how many are um, how many points anyway how many of these uh, whatever they are street furniture litter bins you know whatever they are how many of these red triangles are actually within these 50 meter road names well again under under um, vector you can go to count points in polygon click on count points in polygon polygons are across the 50 meter buffers that we just created and um, and actually I could use either I could use join data joined layer which has the additional attribution or I could use the original random point um, because it's the sort of count of geometry I'm after you can weight them and stuff and, I'll, and I'll, I won't bother with that, but I'll um, leave the count field as num points. Let's run that. So it's created this layer called count. I didn't name it or anything. I left it as a temporary layer. See, it's got that little, almost like a picture of a CPU there. And when you hover over it, it says temporary scratch layer only. So that's temporary. This is in memory. 
it'll, it'll go when we close the project. Um, so what happened? Well, if I click on one of these buffers, these 50 meter buffers of the road, it says num points five. Let's click on this one. Num points naught. Okay, let's just drag this down so we can see better. So uh, what about this one here, this squiggly one here? It looks like there's one, maybe two. Just click. Make sure it's highlighted in there. There you go. Yeah, two. Num points two. So you see how it's added the number of red uh, triangles that are within those 50 meter buffers. And then finally, what we could do is say, well, how about making a better visualized map? Because we've got this count, why don't we do a thematic? So I click on the count, um, this um, layer that it created, change single symbol to categorized. The value to, cap to, use the th to use for the thematic is num points. Hit classify, so all values get added. So the maximum there you can see is 12. And um, um, actually that says random colors. Let's do, let's go up to red, there you go. So that's probably, is that a good one? Uh, let's do reds, let's just do pure reds. So it goes all the way to red. So there's deep red for 12. So there's 12 red triangles in those buffer areas. Press okay. So now we're getting a good picture. Let's get rid of um, uh, the, the color map. I've got all this map there called all this color and I've got a gray one underneath. So it probably shows up just slightly better. But now you can see these glowing A roads where there were the majority of um, those red triangles. Um, and well, that's real glow up that one. What's that? So let's go to um, that and click on it. That must be like 12 or something. Yeah, there you go, num points 12. And just to confirm, if we turn on the random points, there should be loads in that. Yeah, there you go. It's all stashed down near this uh, junction. Um, so there you go. Anyway, um, that's it. I hope you um, like that. That's the sort of image I've ended up with. Um, which of course I could improve uh, by altering the colour scheme, make it a bit bolder maybe, um, and um, I hope you find that useful. Thank you.